Okay, uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for putting together this conference. Uh, this talk is a brief introduction to Legendrian Weaves. Uh, and so the setup, we're given a Legendrian link, lambda in the contact three sphere. And we wanna say something about the uh, Lagrangian surfaces in the symplectic four ball, whose boundary is uh, this link. So we got these uh, exact Lagrangian fillings of lambda. And if you're not familiar with Legendrians, uh, then you can think of them uh, as smooth links with some added properties. Uh, and all we'll really need is that if we look at the front projection into the XZ plane, uh, we can lift that uniquely to a Legendrian in contact S3 uh, by setting the Y coordinate to be uh, DZ over DX, so the slope. What I want to tell you about today is a, um, a diagrammatic calculus for um, uh, constructing and distinguishing um, exact Lagrangian fillings of uh, closures of positive braids um, due to Casals and Zaslo. Uh, so uh, if we're given a positive braid, uh, what we want to do is we want to um, encode the information of, of a surface um, by studying uh, the singularities of its front projection. So uh, we're going to be um, looking at fronts in uh, contact R3, lifting those into um, contact R5, uh, and then projecting um, down into symplectic R4 to get exactly Grangian fillings. Um, so these fronts uh, I get from, so if I look um, at a crossing in my uh, Legendrian um, closure of a positive braid, then I can push that down into the four ball. Um, and what I get are these two sheets crossing. And so um, I can encode that information uh, of this uh, singularity um, by this edge down here. Um, and uh, this front lists to um, two embedded sheets in contact R5. Um, and so uh, everything is good. Um, if I want to add a third strand and do a Rademeister three move, then I get these three sheets. So my first two sheets plus the third one here. Um, and uh, I can encode the, um, the singularities of this front um, where these, these three sheets cross um, by this hexavalent vertex down here. Uh, and then finally, if I had these two crossings, I sort of pull them apart, uh, and then I attach a one handle here, then um, I'm left with a single crossing. Uh, and that's uh, the information of a D4 minus uh, singularity, uh, which, which I encode with this trivalent vertex here. Uh, and so if I weave together these sheets, um, glue together these uh, fronts according to um, uh, whatever um, colored graph that I have uh, in this disk, then um, I get um, my front in R3. Uh, it'll lift to, again, my embedded surface in contact R5. And then I can ask that that projects nicely down to symplectic R4 to give me uh, the filling. Um, so a couple of nice examples. I have fillings of the 3-3 torus link, or sorry, 2-3 torus link, and then the 3-3 torus link. Um, and uh, uh, below, down below here, I have some equivalent moves on these Legendrian surfaces, Legendrian weaves, um, that uh, yield uh, Legendrian isotopic um, surfaces that then project down to Hamiltonian isotopic fillings. Um, but what I want to finish with, the neat application um, here is uh, if I start with the 3-6 uh, torus link, and I do a bunch of Rademeister three moves to get to, um, uh, the three six torus link again. Then um, this gives me a Legendrian cylinder. Project that down to get um, an exact Lagrangian cylinder, and then if I concatenate that cylinder onto existing um, exact Lagrangian fillings, then I get uh, distinct fillings, so non-Hamiltonian isotopic fillings. Um, and if I keep doing that. Um, what Casals and Gao showed is that this gives us uh, 
infinitely many distinct fillings of um, uh, of torus links m n, where uh, m is greater than six and n is greater than equal to three. Um, and I think that's where I'll stop. Thanks. <laughs>